guess you know you're having fun when the week goes by that fast. Hey, Independence Day yesterday? But really, hey, the Asian house opens up today. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, people are going to be, you talk about it so much. We got to get down there one way or the other. Hey, everybody, it's the idea. Marky e. Bilson here, host of Tri City Sports Now, your voice of choice. For a new generation of Tri-City Sports fans, you're in the name of the program, Tri-City Sports Now. We own the Tri-Cities on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. The reason why? The best guess, the hardest hitting opinions in the market. Give you an example. Today, we got the big trifecta now. You know that if it's Friday at 1 o'clock, uh, barring something unforeseen, we're going to be talking to the right rev of speed, or I can't understand why they didn't call him the right rev of rev. I just Jerry Bonkowski, NBCSports.com. He's going to join me at 1 p.m. Uh, lots of storylines going on in NASCAR. And of course, it's the last Independence Day weekend uh, race, at least for the time being, that's scheduled. It could move back or something. Uh, Daytona. And that's been a staple for so long. Of course, it moves to Indianapolis. Daytona's second race moves to the playoff field. So, change. There's change that's good. There's change that I'm going to get to that's not so good. NASCAR loves change. That might be the reason why they're not doing as well as they used to, to tell you the truth. Because I do think that people, you know, they want some standard. You can't change everything and then... All of a sudden, wait a minute, what was this that I knew? You can't go from, boy, I like mushroom and Swiss cheeseburgers, to then going to cheddar and Swiss with a bunch of mustard and mayonnaise and ketchup and relish and onions and turkey burger and cook differently and then think you've got the same sandwich. You don't. This has become NASCAR. So has become baseball, which is what I'm going to talk about here in a bit. Uh, but at 12.30, the Otters are back at home, or are they? I've got their schedule there in Boone. How, how does this team, the Tri-Cities Otters, play in Boone? I mean, I think there are people out there that would consider, say, Abingdon, Virginia, or Wise, Virginia, to be part of the Tri-Cities. Where else would you put the uh, market in? Greenville? Sure. You know, I think the TV market idea is generally, I mean, I'm in media, so that's what I go by. North Carolina, and our signal does get into North Carolina, that's one of the reasons why we talked to uh, Rick Curdy of the Charlotte Bats about getting a Major League franchise just two days ago there in Charlotte. It's for not only our North Carolina listeners, but Tri-Cities as well, because after all, would a, tri would a Greenville team want to draft the area? to be more regional for a double-A team? Think about that. Or, uh, certainly if you live in North Carolina, you know, the border of Tennessee and North Carolina really is thicker, let's just say, than that of Tennessee and Virginia. I mean, Bristol, Virginia, Bristol, Tennessee, it's still Bristol, right? Asheville and North, Carol and North Carolina and Johnson City, Tennessee are very, very, very different places. But anyway, so is Boone. So David Strickland, coach and owner of the Otters, he's going to join me 1230, and we're going to talk about, hey, moving a game here, but also the Otters, one victory out of first place. One victory out of first place. One o'clock, like I said, Jerry Bonkowski will join me. We'll talk NASCAR, going to Daytona. 1.30, it's Josh Brown and Oklahoma Nation. Always a wonderful listen. I have the most fun with him. We're approaching the All-Star break. The Braves are in first place by six games. Now, here's some. Here's a stat that I came out looking at the standings. Do you realize that the Cincinnati Reds, and remember I told you, watch out for the Reds second half of the year. They've got the pitching. The Reds are sitting in last place in the National League Central. Do you realize they are closer to first place, which is currently a tie between Chicago and Milwaukee? They are closer to first place, being in last place, three and a half out, 
than any other second place team in any other division is. Nationals, who moved out of the Phillies yesterday, they swept the Marlins and the Phils dropped two out of three to the Bravos. Well, the Nationals are now in second place, only six games out. Indians are six games behind the Twins. Those are the closest first and second place. Reds are three and a half out there in fifth place. The National League Central, I mean, what in a lot of ways, that National League Central is designed to be uh, a mediocre division because, you know, the big market team is the Cubs, and the Cubs are known for losing, and, you know, even if they did win the World Series three years ago and all of that. But, you know, that's the case. I love talking about baseball. It's my favorite sport, but I keep telling you, watching it is like looking at the uh, Mona Lisa with the mustache and what then they do when they take it to the, uh, you know, restoration project. He says, you know what? The Mona Lisa really needs a goatee and some cigarette burns. I mean, I'm, I'm convinced this is what baseball is doing these days. Not all change is good. New Coke, Miley Cyrus, folks, okay? I need to come up with a couple of other terms in that, but I think it, we've got new listeners every day, so that turns out to be a good phrase, I suppose. But change, now change is good sometimes, but not always. Ask NASCAR. Once upon a time, boxing was as big of a sport as any in this country. Once upon a time. A title fight was the equivalent of the Super Bowl today. I might even make the argument it was bigger. Take something like uh, Billy Kahn against Joe Lewis in 1941, and that may have, this is debatable, but that fight may have stood the test of time better than, say, any Super Bowl. What's the greatest Super Bowl? You know, I mean, there are a lot of people that are... You know, make a lot of different arguments for a lot of different you know, when the, the Patriots came back against the Falcons from 25 five points down, that's the greatest Super Bowl. They only wanted to go into overtime. Or, you know, when uh, Adam Vinatieri kicked uh, one of his field goals. Or, you know, there's a lot of great Super Bowl. Mike Jones making a hit at the one-yard line and breaking all the Titans fans' hearts. You know, that sort of thing. Lots and lots of great Super Bowls. But have they stood the test of time the way that Con and Lewis has. Of course, Con and Lewis has had, you know, 1941, a bit of a head start. But I want to tell you how big that fight was. Pirates were playing, Pittsburgh Pirates were playing, same day, same time that Con and Lewis were fighting. They stopped the game in the fifth inning so that the fans at the ballpark could listen to Con against Lewis. They held the game up for an hour and put Con Lewis on the PA. That's how big that fight was. Oh, title fights in the old days used to be like what the Super Bowl is today. It's not an exaggeration. Or how about this on how big uh, boxing used to be? Used to be. Friday night fights back in the day in the 50s. That's the equivalent of Sunday night football today. No question about it. And then boxing decided to be pay-per-view. I don't know if it was Don King. I don't know if it was the time. I don't know exactly. But when was the last time you were able to watch a title fight without really having to pay for it? I mean, maybe HBO, but you got to pay for HBO. That's always extra. Boxing made themselves less accessible. Going out and to pay to watch... On a closed-circuit TV, don't do that anymore, obviously. I mean, you know, it's obsolete now. But, you know, once upon a time, like going to the arena, Freedom Hall or maybe a movie theater or something like that, to watch the fight on closed-circuit TV, and you paid 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever you paid, you know, to do so. And eventually it was like, wait a minute, do I need to pay $50 to see this fight? No... It's just not in the public vernacular that much anymore. And it became less and less and less desirable to pay-per-view, be it HBO, be it pay-per-view, be it closed circuit in the old days, than it was to say, you know what? It's a ball game on TV, or even one on the radio for that matter, you know, or a movie on TV, or whatever. You know, I, there are other things I can do 
and really all they asked me to do was be entertained by a beer commercial to watch it. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to go out, you know, do I want to watch Monday Night Football or do I want to watch, you know, a title fight? And in time, the title fight, you know, got less and less and less important because you couldn't watch them without paying an arm and a leg or making a serious exerted effort to do so. And I've always thought that the NFL really, they really to this day understand it. To this day, you could probably, you can follow the NFL to this day on rabbit ears. Think about that for a second. I mean, you really, yeah, there's, you know, what do you got, you know, You've got inside the NFL on HBO, they still have, you know, there's pay-per-view, there are obviously games on cable, NFL Network, but you don't really have to have them to follow the NFL. Really, it's, you know, Sunday, uh, Sundays on over-the-air TV, and even the cord cutters can watch it. And maybe it's old-fashioned, and maybe it's beyond the times, but it ensures everybody can watch it. From the 92-year-old man who has never quite grasped even cable, you know, to, yeah, the cord cutter millennial. They can all watch the NFL. Boxing no longer seems to count. Too many pay-per-views. It's happening to baseball. Last night I wanted to watch two ball games. I was even talking about it on this show. It was listed that you could watch two ball games. First one was Pirates-Cubs. Kind of a turkey of a game, 11-3. to But wait, there was action. Joe Madden going after uh, Clint Hurdle with Joe West having to restrain him because he thought that the Pirates were pitching high and tight to his hitters. They were pitching high. Uh, Jordan Lyles was consistently challenging the Cubs with high fastballs. Worked out for seven strikeouts and four innings, but he did allow three home runs. So whatever happened to keep the ball down? Remember that old adage and all that now? You know, everybody's trying to throw hard as they can. You know, 95 is the new 90 and all that. Challenge you with a high fastball. You'll either strike out or get burned. That's modern-day baseball. Yeah, maybe not as exciting as it used to be. But, I mean, uh, the, the, the Pirates are going for the sweep. The Cubs got back into first place. You know, there's a lot of stuff that was going on in that game, even at 11-3. But it was 11-3, so I'm ready for Braves-Phillies to follow. It's in the listings. Could the Phillies hold on to second? Could the Braves pull up uh, six games in the NL East? The answer is no and yes, and I didn't get to see it. And you know why? Because living 268 miles away from SunTrust Park, I checked it out, the game was blacked out. The game was black. I live 628 miles away from SunTrust Park. Phillies-Braves was blacked out in a Tri-Cities market. There are places in the Tri-Cities market that are five hours away from Atlanta. There are places in the Tri-Cities market that are 300 miles away from Atlanta, and the game was blacked out. How in the world was it blacked out? Now, I'm sure I could have gone to a sports bar and watched it. I'm sure I could have gone online and gotten whatever subscription service I needed to. Just like if I want to watch boxing, I can get HBO or pay-per-view. But you know what? I'm sick of being extorted. I'm stick, sick and tired of having a knife held to my throat. I'm sick and tired of saying, okay, do you want to spend something on bit to follow baseball, which is your first love, Marky, and we know you love it, or do you want to put that money into other more practical means? You know, it's one thing to say, yeah, yeah, but a dollar, you know, or something like that. I mean, that's how the lottery works, right? You know, although my grandparents used to even say, you know, a dollar a day, that'll add up. It does. But, you know, when you have to pay a day's pay, let's say, to subscribe to MLB TV, and even then the home games are blacked out, is it any wonder that the modern day sports fan is tuning out baseball? They can't watch it. And instead wondering how many days there are until football season. I got a, you know, somebody who's out there right now. There are only 49 game days until Unicoi County kicks off. And here's how baseball thinks they're going to change that. Uh, let's not throw four balls down on an intentional walk. I mean, it's absurdity. It is absolute absurdity. And this is when change is not necessarily good. Now, I know a lot of people say, baseball isn't struggling. The revenues are higher than ever. For that matter, boxing purses are a hell of a lot higher than Khan and Lewis fought. But do they have 
the pulse of the nation anymore. And therefore, yeah, you know, where does this go? I mean, it does fall out of the public vernacular, and it is, and I hate that, and it's got to stop, but I don't know if it will. Because like I said, the mustache is on the Mona Lisa. Baseball is a Mona Lisa. There's still the Mona Lisa behind that mustache. And as I said at the start, they take it to the, uh, you know, art restoration person. My mother would know what they call those. But, you know, when a painting is damaged like that, you know. And there's a way that they can save the painting. And what Rob Manfred is doing is saying, you know what, it, it, it needs a, a pimple right there. We need to keep it real. We need to make the beauty of the Mona Lisa not to be intimidating to women who are not attractive. I mean, it's insanity. And I've talked about this, the Dodgers. Dodgers used to have the lowest ticket prices in baseball when I was a kid. It was, I'm talking 1985. I know that's ancient history. It's 34 years ago. But it used to be $6 to sit in a box seat. The Mike Brito seats. Boy, am I making historic references. The good seats behind home plate. All right, that was six bucks. Now they're one thousand fifty. You're not selling that to the everyday fan. They're not paying a hundred thousand dollars a year to buy a box seat behind home plate. The corporation is buying that, and as a result, when you notice nobody's sitting in that seat, this is a tax write-off, and it's you know, entertaining clients, that sort of thing. I don't even you know, they even put it on StubHub. You know, no, I don't think so. Now, I realize, like I said, that $6 ticket price is from 34 years ago, but, you know, it hasn't in the 34 years gone from $6 is, the, is worth back then what $1,000 and $50, $1,000 are today. I mean, that's not in step with inflation. And you've simply sectioned your, you've simply priced your way out of the everyday fan. I mean, when you were selling those seats for $6 a pop, then the everyday fan was going, to, they were going to all 81 games. Or maybe if they couldn't go to all 81, that takes a chore. I once went to 80, 58 games in a baseball season. That's a chore. But if you go to, uh, you know, the vast majority of games and get good seats and all that, that's very expensive now. Just like, it was an expensive. I had to have some sort of, I don't know what it was, to be able to watch Braves and Phillies because I'm 286 miles away from Atlanta and somehow the game is blacked out. Blackouts in anywhere are arcane. Who blacks out from the home? Baseball. The NFL realized years ago they couldn't get away with that. Baseball does it. I mean, it's insanity. But here's the deal. It's July 5th. Colin Coward will come on after this show. He'll talk about the NBA. He won't talk about who's going to win the World Series. The off-season NBA storylines. What free agent will go where? That's what the national sports talk radio shows are talking about. That's the public vernacular that they're advancing. It's not, who do you think will win the home run derby? Can the National League beat the American League in the All-Star game? It's not. Are the Reds a viable contender? It's not what's wrong with baseball. I'm probably the only guy that talks about what's wrong with baseball. And maybe it gets to be that it becomes so sour and all this, but I just am like, stop these stupid changes. Quit finding hate in the Indians mask. Okay, you knew that was coming up. I'm sorry, but you got the All-Star game coming up, and the old uh, adage was, you know, why did the Indians uh, put Chief Wahoo off the uniform? Well, they got the all to get the All-Star game, Rob Manfred said that they had to do it. That's what the rumor mill says. Why in the world would they even make that request? Unless you're trying to find hate where it doesn't exist. Something wrong where it doesn't exist which is what happened in 1973 with the designated hitter rule, but that's another story entirely. The attendance, you've read the stories, it's down at ballparks. The World Series ratings, it was Red Sox, Dodgers, should have been real high. They were down last year, 10%. In fact, look at what the World Series ratings, look at what the audience for the World Series is today as compared to before the wild card rounds. And they're half what they used to be. 
Well, there's more programming market. Super Bowl doesn't have this problem. Stanley Cup doesn't have this problem. Or Stanley Cup it used to not be televised. I mean, they're very much... We're getting a four rating. Yay! We didn't used to be on network TV. You know, so... I, but no. You take a baseball playoff game, it's got a quarter of the rating of what a football game in the regular season has when they go head-to-head. -head. Baseball is insistent on changing. And when these changes don't work, they don't say, you know what, we used to be the most popular sport in America, and we played nine men to a side, and the games were rapid pace because the rules dictated that way. Like I said, there were two and a half hours in 72. And, you know, we had uh, every playoff game was on network TV, and, you know, there was, uh, it was really in the public vernacular and all this. Wait a minute. It's not that way anymore. Let's double down on these changes that we've made that don't work. Last night, all I wanted to do was watch the game. And you know what? I'd probably watch heavyweight title fights if they came on, you know, network TV or ESPN or something like that. I don't because they're not on channels I can watch. I wanted to watch Braves Phillies last night. It was blacked out. I don't care why. 268 away, 268 miles away from Atlanta and you're blacked out is absurd. I don't care what reasoning they give you. I didn't even bother to look at it. I mean, it just, who cares? You know, I don't want an excuse. It's not going to make me happy. I wanted to watch a game. An arcane blackout rule from five hours away in my market? Really, Major League Baseball? You are really following down that path to make you the new boxing and just totally out of relevance. And okay, you'll have your cult. You know, you'll have your, they'll call them seamen's. You won't have any stars because the modern-day baseball fan is going to be totally, totally, they don't care about the history of the game, which is what you used to market it on. Now it's all on math. All right. And then because the players are reduced to numbers, they become interchangeable. Who wants the baseball card? Because it's not, you know... Josh Bell out there, it's 59 extra base hits before the All-Star game. And there's no accompanying to it of the name of the player. And then we wonder why there's no baseball stars. Tri-City Sports now.